Hey, what's up, Power Traders? Jason Brown here. I'm coming to you live from my hotel room, hanging out down here in uh, Cincinnati for a conference. But I wanted to uh, talk about what's going on in the market because today is kind of a big day. It'll be pretty interesting. So we have the Fed announcement that's going to happen later today at about 2.30. But I want to talk about what to expect from the market, what to expect from the Fed, and what do we do with all this information. So we know that the Fed is pretty much expected to hike the rates about, you know, 0.75, right? So we know that that's coming out. And so we'll look at the charts in a minute. But if we already kind of know that they're going more towards 0.75 or 75 basis points versus 50 basis points, the market kind of factored that in already and we had the big sell off and I'll show you what I'm talking about in the charts. But I think what's going to be more important from the Fed today is not how much they raise rates because we already know that that's going to happen and most likely at the 75 basis points. What's going to be more important today is number one, what the Fed says about the economy and about what they see going forward as being the policy because today is the first time that I believe they said they're going to give a projection. And so normally the Fed doesn't really project because they're like, we'll see what happens over the next, you know, at the next meeting or at the next quarter. But today they said they're going to give a projection. So why do they feel like they have enough information or enough data to start to project what's going to happen next? And a lot of people may think this is bad news for the market, but it could be potentially good news for the market because they may feel like that inflation and things are either stabilizing and not getting to a point where it's just so out of control that they don't know what's going to happen, which if you're thinking bearish, this could actually turn out to be bullish. Because if you think long term, think about this long term, inflation won't be a problem forever and interest rates just won't keep going up forever. So there's kind of this weird double dutch where we as traders and investors are trying to kind of see when is the moment that we peak and we start to say, okay, it only gets better from here, or it should start to continue getting better from here, even if it means we're going to be worse short term. You know, so the things that we're doing or the Fed is doing, it's going to hurt short term, but it's ultimately to get us to where we need to be long term, which I always say long term, the market goes up, but there's definitely short term opportunities to make money when it drops or protect your account using put options. And so we have to think about when do we switch from being bearish or using puts to like, okay, but long term, we're going higher. So let's take a look at everything that the Fed is going to uh, announce today. So pre-market, if you look pre-market, you can see the market's actually up ahead of the Fed announcement. It's about 9.06 a.m. So you can see Dow futures are up, S&P futures are up, NASDAQ is up. Now, let's talk about everything they're going to announce today. So you can see right here, let's make this a little bigger. The Federal Reserve is widely expected to raise its benchmark interest rate. So we already know that. We're looking for a, a 75 basis point move. So that's already baked in. We're going to look at the chart in a second. Other items, though, that we'll be watching for include the quarterly economic and rate projection. So this is what I was talking about. This is the first time that they're actually going to give a projection. And so that could be good news. If they say we project that there'll be no more 75 basis point hikes from here, that could be good news. If they project we might have to go one basis point next time, that could be bad news because that means they see something that um, is troublesome on the horizon and they need to even go higher than what they're going today. So that could be bad news, but I don't think that's going to happen. But doesn't matter what I think. We'll know at about 2.30. And then, um, you know, they said that judging by the recent economic action, they expect for the Fed to be hawkish and draw a hard line, which just means they're going to stay in their line. But let's look at the chart. And then I want to tell you about something that may be even more important in market moving than the Fed. So let's take a look at the chart. If you look at the S&P 500, so number one, it's in a downtrend. You can see that here. But, and there's always a but. You can't just be 100% bearish. You can't just be 100% bullish. But if you look here, it's very interesting that we are holding around this support level. You can kind of see it um, there when I draw it like that. So you got support right here, right here. And yes, it fell below it a few times, but ultimately got back above this horizontal support line 
And when we sold off, we sold off right down to this support. And so here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. If you look right in this area right here, you can see this is where the CPI data report came out and the numbers were not what we expected from an inflation standpoint. And so the market gapped down and then sold off heavy. So what is that telling you? Well, what that's telling you is that because the CPI report came out, everything was a little bearish and negative, they already started to bake in the fact that the Fed was going to hike the rate 75 basis point. And so what I'm trying to share with you is that the if you're looking for like, once the Fed announced the market's going to tank, that already happened. It already tanked in anticipation of the Fed going 75 basis point because of the bad news. And so I believe if we look back at the chart, I believe that's why we're finding a little bit of a bottom right here because that bad news was already baked in. This thing just gapped down, got crushed, and then sold off down to here. So that's not the news that traders are looking for or waiting for today. The news is going to be, what does he say about rate hikes going forward? And what does he say about the economy? So his words are going to be more important than his actual actions on saying, yep, we're doing a 75 basis point rate hike. Um, if those words are any... Uh, you know, if those words are, I, I don't want to say bullish, but give us any signs of hope, I think the market could bounce and, you know, possibly run back up to this level. Or uh, if he's like, nope, we're going 75 again or one basis point and inflation is sticky and, you know, we got to get it under control and we're not there yet, then I think we can see the market return down to this level. So you got to have a plan A, and I think you also have to have a plan B. So plan A, we already know 75 basis points. If he doesn't go too crazy, maybe we get a bounce in a rally. If he says something that spooks the market even further or brings some information we don't know, um, when he does his projections, perhaps we get smacked back down to here. And I don't know that we'll move back down here in one day. And I'm not saying we'll go back up here in one day, but if it's good, maybe we get a couple days of a rally. If it's bad, what he says maybe we get smacked down to about this $3,700 level, all right? So now let's talk about the next thing, and then we'll wrap up that could be more important than the Fed that markets should be paying attention to if you're not paying attention to, and that's my good man, Vladimir Putin, okay? So Putin, let's just go read word for word what happened with Putin, because he's talking about like, look, we're not done, we're mobilizing more troops, Basically, Russia is not letting his foot up off the gas on this war. And they're looking at the West like, do y'all really want this smoke? Because y'all helping these people, which is the people of um, Ukraine. Uh, but I don't know. This is kind of interesting. Because if I'm in a fight with you and somebody's bringing you water, I'm like, okay, whose side is you on? And then if I'm in a fight with you and then they're bringing you a stick and they're bringing you a gun... At some point, I'm like, okay, you're my enemy too. I don't think I'm going to look at it and say like, yeah, it's okay that you help them, but I'm still going to win. I'm like, hold on. Now it's two against one. What's up? I don't know. Is that how Vladimir Putin's thinking about this thing? I'm not sure, but let's take a look at what the man said, all right? So Putin announces a partial military mobilization and drafts another 300,000 reservist troops to send to Ukraine, all right? And so he uh, recorded a message that said, the West wants to destroy our country. I don't know if he talked about us in the West, but I mean, he like, look, they want to destroy our country. We might need more troops. For what? Is it for, I, I don't know. That's them fighting words right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, he said, he claimed the West had tried to turn Ukraine's people into cannon fodder, all right? So, He's basically saying the West, like, y'all better quit playing, um, helping our, what he believes is his enemy, all right? And then you can see here, they said the cost of flights to uh, leave Russia have skyrocketed after he, you know, talked about pulling 300,000 um, more troops in, and, you know, that's just not good. That's just not good. That does not sound like a man that is... Uh, ready to back down from the war. So what could happen 
is good news from the Fed could be offset by an escalation in the war. And what does this mean by they're pulling in 300,000 more troops? What are they prepared for? What are they getting ready for? Um, yeah, that's not exciting to read. So now you got this kind of, could the Fed give us good news? And then here's the more bad news coming from, uh, you know, Vladimir Putin. Or, you know, do we ignore Putin and like, look, he's just talking. He just, you know, he doing what he got to do to take on Ukraine. Um, but we going to still do what we got to do to support Ukraine. And maybe we just ignore that. I'm not sure. And then we just got all eyes on the feds. The point is, the market is volatile. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of news. There's a lot of things that basically could go wrong and take the market down. So we got to be vigilant. We got to be diligent. And we have to remember that we don't always have to invest during these high volatile Fed announcements. We could just wait see how everything pans out. And then if we want to invest after the smoke clears, we can. However, if you can catch the volatility the right way, meaning market probably go shoot up big or drop big, there's definitely money to be made. But if you're on the wrong side of that, there's definitely money to be lost as well. So you could just wait it out and see what happens. Either way, 2.30, I know I'm going to be um, in front of my computer. At least I'm going to try to be. I'm here at a conference. Uh, but I want to see, you know, what the market's going to do. Is there an opportunity to make some money? And if not, I think there will be uh, the rest of this week and moving forward once we get through this Fed announcement. Let me know. What do you think the Fed is going to say in the comments? Are we going for um, more certainty with the forecast saying like, hey, I think we think we can get this under control and here's what we see for. Or is the Fed going to come in and be like, look, we told y'all before we're going to use the full suite of our tools to control this inflation. And this game is not over. It's only escalating. We're just going to send the market down. What do you think? Bullish, bearish? What's going to happen today? Let me know in the comments. We'll see what the Fed says at about 2.30. Oh, one last thing. Remember, you never go broke taking a profit.